check one, two, three, four. Okay. Take care of this. One, two, three, four. Let's see. Check one, two, three, four. Starting in just a couple of minutes, folks. I'm going to figure out what's going on with this thing. Just skip that then. Let's see how this is going. Check one, two, three, four. Check one, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, we live on we live on <coughs> Facebook. Okay, we're live on Facebook. I'll fix this. Just about there, folks. Hmm. I 
probably are. The only thing is, is Periscope. It's got issues. And I'm not going to worry about that tonight. Just, just not going to worry about Periscope tonight. I'm good everywhere else. Here we go. Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday night wine stream and another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to open up another Australian wine. We're going to uh, open up another Jacob's Creek, as a matter of fact. This is a Shiraz. Uh, as you may recall, uh, a couple weeks ago, we opened up a cab, a Cabernet Sauvignon. It was Jacob's Creek, uh, a fine, fine Australian wine. And we're going to do it again tonight, this time with a Shiraz. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. It's This sounds like this is going to be a very interesting wine to drink. Never tried it before uh, that I can ever recall. I haven't tried this one anyway. So uh, we're going to open it up and, and see, uh, pair it with some food and see, uh, see how it uh, works out. Uh, if you're joining me for the first time, this is Drink with Rick. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show. We just have a good time. We open up a wine. We pair it with some food. We uh, sit back and toast birthdays, anniversaries, national days, and we just talk about stuff. We just have a great time and we interact with each other in the chat. This is a show, this is not a show about me. This is a show about, somewhat about the wine, but this is really a show about you and me. Okay, you and me, us, together, just enjoying uh, a Saturday night, sitting around, uh, drinking our favorite beverage, our favorite libation, and having a good time. So, this is a jam-packed show tonight, so uh, I'm going to be diving in some of this stuff really quick, but uh, I do have time for the chats, and of course in the chats, the chats are live, you can join me in the chat, uh, we've got Twitch chat is open, Red G-Man says, uh, no picture, uh, I hope, I hope so, oh, <laughs> you mean no movie tonight, I guess, uh, he says, hi Rick, and hi right back at you, Red G-Man, stick around, we're going to have a great time tonight. Uh, everywhere else, let's see, we've got, we're running live on YouTube and, of course, Facebook and Twitch. For some reason, something's going on with Periscope, so I can't uh, can't get it live on Twitter tonight. Normally, we're doing that, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it because we usually did, don't get a whole lot of viewers on Twitter. Most of the action happens on either Facebook, Twitch, or uh, YouTube. Not necessarily in that order. Okay, <laughs> so it kind of depends. Anyway, if you're joining me uh, for the first time, of course, uh, on this show, I'm not a sommelier. I'm just an everyman who likes to drink wine. I, and I know what I like. I know what I don't like. And um, I make my recommendations on the level of 99.9% .9 of, of the public out there, uh, of everyone out there in the world who just likes to enjoy wine like I do. So, Take my recommendations as you will, uh, or don't. It's it's fine, but um, you know, this is just pretty much for fun. Uh, you can join us on Facebook, of course, in the live chat. And Ed's in the chat on Facebook. Ed, it's great to see you. Hi, how you doing? I hope you're having a great evening. And uh, oh, I've, I've, I'm gonna, I've got something to tell you. I have some news for you later on. So stick around, and uh, I'll see if I can get that in. If I can remember, remind me if I if it looks like I'm forgetting. Uh, you can join us on the Facebook page at Drink with Rick. Also, uh, YouTube at Drink with Rick. Twitch is Drink with Rick One, the number one Drink with Rick One, and uh, Twitter is at Drink with Rick. Uh, you can tweet me as well. I'll check the tweets from time to time. And of course, on our website at drinkwithrick.com. And uh, of course, the podcast goes out. This is live here, but the podcast version of this goes out on Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern. That's 10 p.m. Eastern uh, time at uh, drinkwithrick.com. And everywhere where you can find a podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, 
your favorite Android uh, app, uh, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Radio, Deezer. You can also do it by email. Uh, subscribe by email there, and uh, you'll get the latest episodes as soon as they come down. This is all over here at our website at drinkwithrick.com. You can also watch this show live at drinkwithrick.com, where uh, it's it's posted live. If you want to comment, you can. We don't have a live chat going, but you can comment in the comment section below. If you just click on the actual post page. Uh, there should be a comment section up, and then you can leave a comment, and I will respond in kind. So this is what we're doing uh, tonight. Oh, I've almost forgot. You can email me, rick at savoyamedia.com. That's rick at savoyamedia.com. Remember that email because we're, we've got something coming up in the show later uh, and uh, a chance to win a book. Oh, a chance to win a book. So uh, keep that email in mind because that's how the entries are coming in. So, uh, this is what we're drinking tonight. This is a Jacob's Creek Classic Shiraz. Let me pull that up here. This is a 2018, a vintage 2018. It's uh, named after Jacob's Creek, site of uh, Johann Gromp's first vineyard. This is uh, an Australian wine. And we, like I said, we had the, the uh, cab a couple weeks ago. It was very, very nice. So we're going to try the Shiraz this time. I'm going to read the back end of this real quick, and I'll get right back to the chat in just a moment. Uh, Jacob's Creek Shiraz, our winemaking tradition, dates back to 1847 when Johann Gramp planted his first vineyard on the banks of Jacob's Creek. A medium-bodied wine with plum, pepper, and spicy fruit flavors with subtle hints of toasted oak. Enjoy with any red meat dishes or hard cheeses. And that's uh, by Daniel Swincer, a winemaker. Then uh, there is 13.9% alcohol by volume uh, in this 750 milliliter bottle. It is a product of Australia, produced by Jacob Creek, uh, Jacobs Creek Wines, Barossa Valley Way, in uh, Rowan Flat, uh, South Australia, and imported by Pernod Ricard, USA, New York, New York. It's imported into the U.S. And that is the lowdown on this back label on this wine. I have some foods to pair it with tonight also. Let's look at that just briefly. On these foods, I have um, some, uh, this is some burger, some, some grilled burger, uh, grilled by my lovely wife, Chi, and uh, some roast beef. And we have some, we have a, a, a grillé cheese, and uh, my favorite, the Trader Joe's Creamy Gouda. We're going to see if this pairs up this wine and some crackers. This is so, I, I did some checking on this wine earlier, and it's supposed to go good with hard cheddar, as it, as it said, hard cheese on the back of the label, but hard cheddar in particular. But I, I didn't realize, uh, my wife uh, went out to the store earlier today, and she said, do you need anything at the store for tonight? And I was thinking, I was thinking, no, we, I think we have everything, because I was thinking we had plenty of cheddar cheese in the fridge, uh, but then later on, she came back uh, when, when she was prepping this up for me, which was is, is always just just great. It's just, she's just awesome to, to prep these up for me before the show. And she said, "Well, we don't have any cheddar." And I'm like, "Uh oh." And she says, "Huh? You should have you should have told me." I, I didn't know. So we know cheddar, but we have a couple of other cheeses to pair it with. That's that's fine. That's fine. It's all good, right? So uh, we're going to go ahead and open this wine, but before I do, let me check the chats one more time. Uh, go on to uh, Twitch, CM Cinder uh, says, howdy do, and howdy do right back at you. Red Gman says, I will be in and out. That square guy is cooking a cherry pie on stream shortly, so we'll be checking on him too. Oh, please, please, tell, tell that square guy I said hi, give him my best, tell him I'm over here streaming too, and please ask him to save me a piece of pie uh, when, when, he's, when he's done baking it, because uh, that would be be nice to try um that uh, yeah yeah uh, uh, tell him i said hi and v color blinds in the chat v color blinds great to see you he says hey rick do you know of a great red wine under 30 dollars um well we're about to find out if this is one we're going to find out because i'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this wine just a moment as we're pouring it but let's get the pouring first because that's a lot of fun and like i said this is a jam-packed show tonight and I can't stay too late, so uh, or I'll or I'll get the, the the evil eye from my wife more or less <laughs> if it's too late. So um, we're gonna try to just get to opening and pouring because I got a lot. We've got a lot to to talk about tonight. Anyway, 
uh, I have my glass here, my trusty glass, and this does not need a uh, corkscrew tonight because this is a screw cap. So we're just going to go ahead and unscrew it. And um, of course, I have my trusty Veneto aerator from the Veneto wine lover set, which is available from Amazon. And uh, I have a few things to say about Amazon uh, later as well. Tied into Twitch, by the way. <laughs> I have some things to, to talk about with Twitch tonight. We're going we're gonna to get into that later. But um, this is my trusty aerator, which I really, really like. And uh, to, uh, to hold the wine, I've got my trusty, uh, this is my uh, trusty Galway uh, Irish Crystal glass, genuine Irish crystal glass, imported from Ireland and uh, given to me by my employers at buy2wearradios.com. We're going to give it a little bit of a pour, just a little bit of a pour, and uh, yes, and um, while it's breathing a little bit, give it a little time to breathe, I'm going to talk about this wine just a little bit and tell you uh, a little bit of background what I found on this wine. It is, uh, this is a Jacob's Creek, this is a 2018. I hunted around online, and it's a popular, it's, uh, people like this wine. It seems to be very popular, so that's one reason why I'm trying it. And it was a recommendation from uh, a friend of mine on, on Twitch, uh, was it on Twitch there not too long ago, who uh, recommended this Shiraz, and I thought I've got to try it. So uh, I, I, I hunted around, and the median price on this wine seems to be $9.99, $9.99. I picked it up, uh, or actually my wife picked it up for me at our local supermarket, local Harris Teeter, and she paid $5.99 for it. So I think I got, I may, well, if it's any good, I may have gotten a bargain on it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. So that's about a little, little more than half the price of, of what is going for online, apparently. So we'll find out. And one of the reasons, of course, of trying it is because I've been tr trying to find wines that are low on the low end in the five to ten dollar range. That during this pandemic and everyone's budgets are very very tight, um, as is my waist because uh, it seems I haven't been out of the house that much and <laughs> I've been gaining a little bit of weight. <laughs> and uh, so I've been trying to, to stick to the budget wines that, that people can generally afford these days and, and uh, or, you know, hopefully can afford. So uh, that's what, I'm, what I've been trying to stick to. But um, let's see. This, uh, this wine, I, I did some checking around, and uh, apparently, once again, it, it gets some, some fairly high marks. People seem to really, really like this wine. So we're going to try it out right now. Matter of fact, we'll try it out right now. Give it a little whiff. Mmm. Smells a little oaky. And uh, right on the nose, I get some cherry. And uh, you can kind of smell a little pepper in there. Cherry and, and oak. And um, a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, red fruits in there. Let's give it a taste. Let's give it a taste, shall we? Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Very bold wine. Very bold flavor. The, the, it's, it's a um, fairly, I wouldn't say super dense, but it, it, it's, it's, it's um, fairly um, heavy bodied wine. I don't know if you can tell right here. Uh, the lights don't do it justice, but uh, yeah, it's it's um, very full-bodied wine, and it's uh, very bold tasting. But right off the the nose, I I, uh, I was tasting, uh, I was getting some cherry and, and some oakiness, but it is kind of oaky, and I tasted a little bit of of um, I, I tasted a, a few spices in there, but it was a very very heavy mix of a lot of different things. I tasted a little bit of cherry. I tasted some plum, but I, a lot of it got lost on me because it was it was just there was just so much coming at me at once. Peppery, pepper, quite a bit of pepper, and um, 
and it is oaky. A little hint of chocolate in there. And uh, yeah, some plum and some cherry. But also, I think, I'm, I want to say is that, oh, I'm going to try it again. There's one, there's something else in there that I'm tasting that I, I kind of like. Is that a hint of licorice? Yes, it is. Licorice. I love licorice. Some people don't like licorice. My, my kids don't particularly like it, but I love licorice. And uh, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about red licorice. I'm talking about the black, you know, licorice. And uh, I, I do like that flavor. And uh, actually, it does have a bit of a licorice flavor to it. Mm. Now, this is why I was a little surprised at, at the very beginning. It has a, um, a quite a, it is a bold tasting wine right up front. And when I closed my mouth, when I had it in my mouth, and had it going around in my mouth a little bit, it tasted sweet. It's not a sweet wine per se, but it, 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 it had sort of a sweetness to it. And as it went down, it, um, it, it was dry going down. And this is a very dry wine. This is, uh, don't get me wrong, this is, this is very dry. Um, and it's kind of mildly acidic. It, I would say it's kind of medium, medium acidic. Um, and there are some tannins in there. I'd say that the tannins are a little bit on the medium side as well. It's sort of, sort of, it is tannic, but not too, it's not real tannic, uh, but it, there are some tannins in it. But I did notice that it, um, as it went down, it had a very, very smooth, almost a silky finish to it. Almost a silky finish to it. And I, I, I think that's, uh, I rather like that. I can see why it's popular with some, some folks. Um, it actually, it, it starts off strong, kind of has a sweetness to it as you put it in your mouth and close your mouth on it. And then it's very dry going, you know, as, as you, as you, as it goes down and then has a, a very, almost kind of a silky finish. Some complex, yeah, some complex notes to it. And then that's not, I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's actually, there's a, there's a lot to is a lot to take in on that wine. A lot of different flavors in here. Actually, I kind of like that. That's kind of kind of uh, cool. I kind of like that that wine. We're gonna have some more of it. We'll we'll pair it with some foods in just a minute. But, but let's go back to the chat for just a moment. Nothing going on on YouTube chat wise, and that's unexpected. And uh, let's see what's going on on Twitch. Twitch uh, V Colorblind. Hey uh, hey Rick, do you know of a great red wine under thirty dollars? Yes, he he asked me that and and. Um, I, I know of a few. I know of a few. There's uh, uh, a great wine. There are several great wines behind me, as a matter of fact. One that comes to mind right away is an Escorlada, which is kind of unique to um, the distributors around here in this area. This uh, Shiraz, I'm kind of liking this. You know, the Jacobs Creek Cab is actually pretty good. And the wine that we had, well, the wine that we had last week, that was the uh, Pierre Angulaire. That, that was a white wine. That was a Sauvignon Blanc. But uh, it was actually quite good. But you were asking about a red wine in particular. Uh, the fit vines are good. Bellicosa is pretty good. And the, uh, what is that? The Boulay Cordeaux. I, I actually like that quite a bit. Uh, those are some, some really good wines. Uh, red G-Man says about $9 in Australia, which is about $6.50 U.S., a reliable budget wine. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it is a reliable um budget wine so far uh, i like it i like it so far and and once again it's it's not like i like every wine i don't just say that about every one of course there are a lot of wines that i've had that i've liked but there are some that i did not like too much and there have been a couple that have poured down the drain after the show so um you know i've been known to 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 uh, not like every wine out there but i do like wine and, and this actually seems to taste pretty good but we're going to try it with a couple of foods we're going to see how it pairs up with some of these foods we're going to try that right now i only get a wider shot on this so you can see what we've got here uh, i'm going to try this with the with the uh, burger first and i think the burger is a little bit cold because it's been sitting here for about half an hour but um the burger is good, by the way. That's actually pretty good. And a Shiraz, in general, is supposed to go pretty good with beef and lamb, chicken, um, and hard cheeses. 
See how it goes with this. Yeah, the tannins, the medium tannins in here, and the, I think the spices, the pepper notes in here, actually kind of help this burger. I think it, it, it actually does accentuate the burger somewhat. And I like it. I think that's a fairly decent pairing. I think this would go good with a burger. I think it would go great with a steak, a marinated steak that uh, that's marinated with some spice, you know, some things like peppers and things like that. Uh, a good uh, grilled steak. I think it would go fine with that. Let's try it with a roast beef. Now it's supposed to go okay with uh, with things like roast beef. So we're, I've, I've got some roast beef here. We're going to give it a try. Red meats. This the the key here. Red meat. Some poultry, I think, but I think like a smoked turkey, maybe a lamb. This I think this would be okay with lamb. Let's start with the roast beef. Mm. Roast beef is good, by the way. Boris said. I like that. I like that. It's a good pairing with the, uh, this is a boar's head roast beef. I like that. That's actually, actually pretty good. I think if you had a, a uh, sub, like a, a, a roast beef sub or something, you make yourself a nice roast beef sandwich with some boar's head um, roast beef, I think it would uh, do really well with this. Uh, but let's try it with the Gruyere. Try the Gruyere, and uh, this is kind of a little bit, kind of tastes sort of like a Swiss cheese a little bit. Oh, this works. It's hard to not like wine and cheese combos, although some cheeses go better. Now, this Gruyere is a, is a fairly hard cheese, and it said hard cheeses. I wouldn't, it's not a soft cheese, but it's not super hard, but I, I think it's, hard cheese is like a Parmesan, I think hard cheese is, I think, a really um, um, uh, sharp cheddars and, and, and blocks and, and uh, some Parmesans and things like that that are really hard cheeses. Uh, this, not that hard, but it's, it's, it's hard enough, it's, I think, and it actually worked okay. I'm going to have a little bit of a cracker to, actually I should have a little water first to clear the palate. And then we'll try it with the, with the, the uh, Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. My favorite, and we have not had, after, after 25, 30 bottles of wine, we have not had a bad pairing with this cheese. Not yet. Is this still a winner? We'll see. Mm. Good, good, uh, good uh, Gouda cheese. Yeah. Still a winner. Still a winner. It's still a top dog there as far as the cheese and wine pairing are concerned. That's one of my favorite cheeses. I did. I do like that. Very, very nice. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Let's check the chat again here. Uh, Ed's in the chat, and I hope you're doing well, Ed. And uh, did you like the book? How, how's the book? Ed won the. Uh, Ed was the winner of our Start Ugly uh, book giveaway uh, about a month ago, and uh, I, I just thoroughly enjoyed the book. And and Chris Kremitzis, who's a friend of mine, um, he really did a fabulous job with it. And a very inspirational and inspired me to continue on with this uh, this show. As a matter of fact, that was a that book was sort of an inspiration uh, for me. And um, I reviewed it on Amazon, by the way. So um, on on the wine streams, I've got the video. You can go out uh, if check the book out on Amazon. Start ugly, a uh, timeless tale of innovation and change. It, uh, I, I do have a video review up there on the Amazon listing uh, that was clipped from an episode of this show. So uh, that's used, and, and it's a very, very highly rated book. Anyway, so, uh, and we've got another one to give away tonight, too. So, so stick around, stick around, and you may have a chance to win that. 
so uh, let's check the chats other chats here everything is is good all right so we've got a good pairing <clears throat> the wine looks good let me uh let me fill up let me tank up let me fill up the glass again because what we're going to do now is we're going to uh do do some celebrations so i hope everyone has something to drink what's everyone drinking tonight you don't have to be drinking anything it's okay you don't have to drink wine you can drink a beer you can drink cognac you can drink uh, uh cooking sherry if you want you can drink some port drink some uh, good port there's uh, there are some good ports out there uh you, uh, you can drink bourbon you can drink uh, you know what today oh we're gonna get into that in a minute so i don't want to i don't want to take uh i don't want to spoil that spoiler alert on there it, it is a dr day for Tomorrow's a day for drinking something, a national day for drinking something. And I'll talk about that later. <clears throat> and uh, you, you can drink Gatorade if you want, water, the Perrier, whatever it is you want to drink. Just sit back and drink it. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to uh, everyone watching me now, all my friends, uh, all my, my, uh, my followers everywhere. Thank you for being here. So let's get right to the booth birthdays, because we have uh, we have a lot of celebrations, not just birthdays, but we have an anniversary uh, and and some other uh, uh, events to cover. So let's get right to it. First, I want to give a birthday shout out. Give a big birthday shout out to uh, my friend Julie. Julie, Julie Smith. Uh, she's my uh, my wife's cousin, cousin Julie. Julie and Bill. Hope you're doing well. And Kevin also. And uh, Julie, her birthday is coming up on Monday, 8-17. Uh, her birthday is this coming Monday. So Julie, here's a uh, birthday wish for you. Have a happy birthday. You know, Julie, uh, tragically, Julie was involved in a, in, uh, a terrible, ter terrible accident uh, last year. She actually stayed in her house for, for a little while to recuperate. Uh, while well, she was recuperating for a few days, and uh, she she just uh, it was just a, a, a terrible, a really bad accident. But I believe that she's pretty much recovered, and uh, I think she's doing okay now. So uh, it's, it's she's had some time to recover. But anyway, here's to you, Julie, and happy happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, and I hope you're doing well, and Bill and Kim as well. Um, I also want to give a birthday shout out to a, a friend of mine who uh, I haven't actually spoken to her recently uh, much. I haven't seen, uh, um, seen her on Facebook too much, but uh, she is a fellow podcaster and uh, she does a couple podcasts. Uh, this is Colleen. Colleen, Colleen Mullen. Her birthday is uh, also Monday. We have a lot of Monday birthdays. Uh, her birthday is Monday and uh, she does uh, coaching. Um, she she does a coaching uh, podcast, and um, and I think it's, it's co coaching through class. I think is is uh, and she does a couple of them. She does a couple of podcasts. She does another one called Shrink to Shrink, and um, she's a longtime podcaster. Anyway, Colleen, here's to you. Happy happy birthday to you, and I hope you're doing well also. Happy birthday, Colleen. Now another one. I got to refill the glass for the, for some of these here. We're going to be to, we're going to be doing a lot of toasting uh, to uh, my friend Lynn, um, my good friend Lynn, uh, Lynn Garrett, and uh, Lynn. Her birthday is also uh, no, her birthday is also Monday. Yes, it is. We have three birthdays on Monday, and Lynn. Um, we go way, 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 way back. Um, she. Uh, was uh, at one time the the, the uh, wife of my good friend Charles, and um, uh, they're no no longer together. But but uh, but we've known her for many many years. We've all been family friends for a long long time, since uh, all since the nineties, uh, you know, early nineties. And um, I, I hope Lynn's doing well. I haven't talked to her lately, but uh, my wife Chi talks to her uh, from time to time. They they get together and talk. And uh, Lynn, your birthday is uh, Sunday. Uh, the, I believe this coming uh, was it Sunday? No, it was uh, no. I'm sorry, it's Monday. What am I saying? I'm getting my notes mixed up. I'm sorry. It's Monday. It's Monday. 
So, yeah, I haven't had enough yet, have I, folks? Yeah, we'll, we'll just wait till I get way down to the bottle, and then, then it'll be really fun. Uh, so, and you can laugh at me then. Laugh at me now, I don't care. It's good. It's all good. Anyway, Lynn, your birthday is Monday, and happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. May you have many, many, many more. I hope you're doing very, very well. Here's to you, Lynn. Lynn Garrett. Also, another special birthday toast for, and actually it's kind of a belated birthday toast because I kind of missed it. Uh, it was actually the day after, uh, it was actually last Sunday, last Sunday, which was uh, the day after the, the last wine stream. But this is for my good friend Tess. Uh, Tess and I are old friends, and um, Tess and uh, she's good good friends with my wife, G, and Tess... Um, she, her birthday is, yes, yeah, Sunday, tomorrow, uh, no, last, last Sunday, and she, um, I met her, I met her back when I was dating my wife, when I was dating Chi, and we all became good friends, uh, I think she and, and Chi went to school together, and, uh, they were, uh, nurses together, and, and, uh, it, it they, they have a long history, and uh, so they're, they're really close friends, and, uh, Tess is just a sweet person. Tess is just a, a, a really, really sweet person. Uh, very nice. And uh, she has a daughter and uh, who we've known since pretty much since birth. And um, I want to say, Tess, this birthday it wishes for you. I hope you're having a, or you had a great birthday. I hope you're having a great um, uh, life up there where you are, and and uh, hope everything is going well for you. I hope everybody's safe and and secure. It. Your whole family's fine, and uh, I hope uh, I, I wish the best for you. I hope you have many, many, many more birthdays as well. Happy birthdays! Happy birthday to you, Tess. You know what? I'm going to toast you again, Tess, just because I can. Here's to you, Tess. Happy birthday. A good friend, Tess Milo. We have an anniversary as well. Before we get to that, let me check on um, on Facebook. Uh, let me check up on Facebook. Ed says, like the book and the coasters and the pen. Thank you, Ed. Ed. Um, I like the coasters. As a matter of fact, I'm using one right now. I'm using one to hold this. <laughs> I have one right here. It's it's a little bit stained up from all the, the wine, but... Uh, uh, I use it as well. A lot of people use these. They were actually popular coasters. People ask for them a lot, and I, I do send them out. And uh, I sent them out. Victor, I hope, if you're watching uh, later, Victor, uh, I hope you got yours. Okay, I sent those out last week, and uh, I hope you received them fine, and uh, you're using them in good health. And uh, let's see, who else? Oh, uh, wow, people have been asking me for coasters here, and... and uh, up the local wine store. If you're if you're in the Charlotte area, you can go down to the local wine store on, on Blakeney, and and you can actually if they still have any left. I haven't. Uh, I, I don't know if they still have any left there, but uh, if they do, you can you can pick you can pick one up there as well. Um, okay, so anniversaries. I have a special anniversary toast to make, and this is for um, my good friend Mike. Mike Smith, Mike and Dorothy Smith. This is uh, just amazing, folks. This is amazing. If 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 you um, you haven't toasted anybody already, toast this one. This is really this is really definitely worth toasting because I tell you what, this is definitely a milestone. Uh, Mike and Dorothy have been married uh, for for thirty one years for thirty one years or forty one years 30, 30, 31 years. Um, their anniversary was Tuesday on 8-11, uh, and uh, I want to say happy anniversary to to Mike and Dorothy. Mike is, um, I've known Mike for, for, for quite a while. Uh, he is a, a podcaster, fellow podcaster, and I, I met him first when uh, we were on the, uh, when I was doing my force field podcast uh, for IT service providers, and uh, we were both members of the Tech Podcast Network. And uh, we uh, we kind of met each other then, and I have uh, 
Uh, Mike, Mike's a really great guy. He, he uh, lives up uh, up north on the north end. And I, every time I go up there, I always think, man, I want to go by and see him. Uh, but I never get a chance to do that. I just never get around to do it. Well, Mike, one of these days, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll have to check that. Or maybe come down here. Come down here and stay with us for a day or so and, uh, and, and visit. Anyway, um, Mike does the Mike Tech Show. It's, he's an IT guy like, like I was for many years. And uh, he's very, very good at what he does. Very good. And he puts on a great show. He does a live stream. He does his podcast, but he does a live stream, kind of like this. Um, and, and he does, uh, does it live. And he talks about various things related to IT. And he has a huge following. He has a f- huge dedicated following. He's been doing this for 15 years, 14, 15 years. I, think he's, he's, I know he's been doing it as long as I have. I think he's been doing it a little bit longer than I have. So I, I think he's probably been doing it closer to 15 years. But uh, he and I are both uh, old guard podcasters and um, go way back. And he does a fine, fine show. He's very knowledgeable at what he, what he does. And, um, and then after the podcast, he does kind of an after the show show kind of thing. And, uh, you know, he opens up a bottle of beer, a bottle of wine. I've had, I've, we've been toasting together online a few times <laughs> with the beer and the wine in the past uh, after a show. And uh, it's it just, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. If you remember, catch his show. It's the Mike Tech Show. I think he's up to like episode 1000 something. I don't know. He's, he's been doing this for a long time. Anyway, Mike and Dorothy, here's to you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. And may you have many, many, many more. I'm going to toast you again because you know what? Mike was kind of an inspiration for me. Folks like Mike and uh, Smith and um, Todd Cochran. Uh, and, and a few other people that have been streaming for a long, long time were kind of an, uh, sort of an inspiration uh, for me to, to do this, to do Drink with Rick and to stream myself. And they've been doing it longer than I have, but uh, and for a long time I didn't do it because I really didn't have the resources uh, to do some of that. I, I was doing podcasting. I kind of want to stick to the podcast, the audio only. I didn't think that I would, I could do a live show. And if you see the first episode of Drink with Rick, you'll understand why. <laughs> first few episodes. But I, you know, it really, after I did the first episode of this, it really caught on. And I realized, you know, I should have done this years ago. I should have done it many, many years ago. Uh, because it's it's just I'm I'm just having a, a blast doing it. I'm having a great time doing it. Anyway, Mike, here's to you once again. You and Dorothy, happy anniversary. It's Mike and Dorothy Smith. I, I want to switch gears here a little bit, and and I know it's uh, I don't want to be a, a, a downer on this, but I want to switch gears a little. We've got some more things coming up, as a matter of fact. I, we, we want to, uh, I've got, uh, we've got the National Days, and of course we've got uh, uh, some other things. I want to talk about Twitch a little bit, and um, some recent things on, on, on Twitch um, regarding regarding me. And I, I want to thank um, a, a, a lot of folks on Twitch for, for helping me out with some of this. Before we get to that, uh, I, I have a, uh, I, I want to give my condolences to a good friend of mine, an old friend of mine, another fellow podcaster who has been uh, podcasting for a long time. Someone else I, I, I met and got to know uh, through the Tech Podcast Network and, and working with him on, on various things. We've done, we've done a couple contests and things like that together uh, with our shows and things like that done a little collaboration uh, in the past and uh, a really really cool guy really cool guy and that's uh, I'm, I'm talking about Jeff Jeffrey Jeffrey Powers um, Jeffrey lost his dad this past uh, this past week uh, on Thursday 813 I did not know his dad uh, really uh, well but I I know what Jeff Jeffrey and his family are going through because I lost my dad a few years ago, and um, 
even though I I didn't really have the relationship with my dad that I that uh, Jeffrey had with with his, um, I can really really appreciate and and and, and respect the the um, uh, you know what the what their family's going through, what Jeffrey and his family are going through right now. Uh, he sounded like a great guy, uh, Timothy. This is uh, for Timothy A. Powers. And I did a little reading on on him and and uh, and his family, and he had quite a, quite a history. And, and he sounded like a fun guy. He sounded like he was a really nice, fun guy. And and uh, Jeffrey, I, I want to say I'm really I'm really sorry to hear about the loss of your dad. Um, I, I want to send my condolences to you and your family. And um, I want to to say um, <clears throat> I, I understand. I've, I've been there. Uh, lost several family members over the years. I don't want to lose any more. <laughs> uh, but Jeffrey, uh, I, I want to say that uh, I'm thinking about you, buddy. I'm thinking about you, and I'm thinking about your family. And uh, our hearts, our prayers go out to you uh, during this time, difficult time. Uh, I want to say. Uh, here's to your dad. Even though I didn't know him personally, uh, I, I want to say any loss uh, is 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 a great loss. And uh, here's here's to you. Here's to your dad. And uh, this this is for your dad, in his memory, for for uh, Timothy A. Powers. Um, anyway, uh, there's, uh, I think that's, there's one more thing. There's one more person that I think I kind of have to give a, a, a actually a birthday shout out to. If it's true, I don't know, Cyrano77, um, Reggie, man, anybody, uh, in the chat here, V Colorblind, uh, for, uh, uh, any of the folks there on Twitch, uh, Cyrano77, I caught in the chat last week that uh, his birthday was last week. He didn't specify which day it was last week, but I want to say if it's true, if, if he wasn't joking, if, if Cyrano77, if his birthday was indeed last week, I want to say happy belated birthday. Here's to Cyrano77. Happy birthday. I didn't want to forget anybody. I did not want to forget anybody out here, so I just want to make sure I got all of those those birthdays. There is one more thing. Oh, I almost forgot. There is one more thing. Okay, as you know, just one more thing. I'm, I'm a big Columbo fan. You watch Columbo? Big Columbo fan. Oh, just one more thing. Um. As I've been promoting the last few weeks, uh, I've been talking about the Pod, uh, the Podfest um, Global Summit, and um, Podfest, which my son and Tommy and I are, are we, we've been attending Podfest for the last few years, and we were fortunate enough to attend the uh, Podfest 2020. Um, it was actually the last uh, that we know of, the last convention, the last um, uh, conference. Uh, held in Orlando before the pandemic uh, came full uh, swing and 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 shut everything down. So we got out of there. Actually, we got out of Orlando just as uh, just before they started um, putting the brakes on on doing these kind of live events. And uh, we we were using some social uh, we you know, well not so much social distancing because we really didn't have some of that information at the time but we were uh, doing the hand sanitizing they had hand sanitizers out and everything like that and we were trying to be careful um, during the event but that we had uh, I think uh, what a thousand twelve hundred nine nine hundred a thousand people there at that event pretty much and it was a great event it was just we all had a blast. And um, anyway, so uh, the the organizer of Podfest, uh, the, the uh, founder Chris Kremitzos, who's a friend of mine, and Tommy's, and also who was the 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 author of the book uh, Start Ugly, he the founder of Podfest. Uh, they decided they they wanted to do a Podfest Global Summit, which was an online 
you know, since we couldn't get together for PodFest anymore for a little while due to the pandemic, he wanted to do an online event. And it was uh, like a a 10-day online event, but with a twist. He wanted to do this with a twist. He wanted to do... um, he wanted to do something where he could get as many people as possible, at least 5,000 people together to create the largest online conference ever for the Guinness Book of World Records. So he contacted the Guinness Book of World Records and uh, they did this conference and I was part of it. Uh, Tommy couldn't do it because he was was, uh, going off to college here. He couldn't attend, but I got a ticket and I attended. And... I attended some of the conference. I couldn't be there for all of it because I was working, of course. But uh, I, I attended uh, quite a bit of it, and very good stuff. A lot of good, great speakers. A lot of good information. In fact, the the book uh, they they had a track on on publishing that I was very interested in, and I, it was very interesting. I learned a lot of things about that uh, publishing track, and it was very good. I, I really enjoyed it. So um, they had a lot of speakers, and they hit the goal. And as a matter of fact, while I was online uh, attending one of those events, they hit the goal of 5,000, uh, I think it was 5,000 people uh, globally for the largest, the, they, they made the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest global assembly of, uh, of people online for an online event ever. Now, granted, that it'll probably be... I think uh, podcast movements actually trying to to see if they can already break that <laughs> podcast movement, which is a, a, another another um, uh, podcast uh, event that that I'm involved with a little bit. But um, my my home my home is is really with Podfest. That's my that's my tribe. They're my family. Uh, Podfest and based in Orlando, basically. Uh, Tommy and I are, are that's our home. Uh, pod, podcast movement. I actually haven't been to a live event there yet. One of these days, maybe. But, but Podfest. We've been to several of them, and we we really love them. And Chris and Katie Kremitzis are just great people, and the other organizers there. That uh, the, uh, and all the people. It's it's really a family kind of thing. It's a really a podcast family. That event Podfest is in Orlando. Anyway, uh, so they made their goal. They hit it uh, Friday thir- uh, Friday afternoon, I think. Uh, either Thursday afternoon or Friday afternoon. I can't remember. It's all the week's kind of a blur. But um, they hit the goal while I was there, and they announced that they actually uh, made the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest online gathering of uh, uh, you know, for an event, for a live conference, a live event. So I want to say to Chris... And to Katie and to all those people who worked so hard, all the speakers, all the people who attended, um, everyone who uh, there, uh, congratulations. I'm going to say, oh, man. there we go. Congratulations for making the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest uh, conference, uh, largest gathering globally, worldwide uh, that that's just that's quite an achievement quite an achievement here's to you congratulations and you know what i'm going to do it again because because i'm a member of that podcast of that family the podfest family a proud member of the podfest family and just because i can congratulations to all of us Podfest. So, uh, if you're just joining me for the first time, well, what we're drinking is we're drinking the Jacobs Creek Classic Shiraz. This is a Shiraz. It goes. It, it, I actually like it. I like. It's it's very peppery. It's actually become more peppery as um, as I'm drinking down into the bottle. And as you know, as I always say, that you can't really get. You know, uh, yeah, I. I I know um, Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, I, I know his. I don't know him personally, but you know I, I've followed him for a long, long time. And I know he likes to spit. Uh, you know he, he swirls spits. A lot of the sommeliers, a lot of the professionals do that. 
I don't believe in that. I believe that the way to find out if the wine is really any good or not is you've got to get down into the wine, right? You've got to get down into the bottle. And that's why we don't spit here. <laughs> this is drink with Rick. We drink their wine, okay? I'm, no, I'm not going to go there, okay? I'm not going there. We, but we, we, drink, we drink the wine, okay? Because that is what wine... And the wine was not meant to be opened, take a sip and spit it out in a bucket. No, no. That's a complete waste of wine. Now look, I'm not putting down Gary Vee, okay? I mean, you know, there are a lot of Gary Vee fans out there. I'm one of them. I like, I like, I like uh, Gary Vee. He's a very smart guy. Even if he does have a potty mouth. And I'm not that type of person. I'm, I'm not really uh, big into cursing. Uh, but um, look... I like to enjoy my wine. I open a bottle of wine. I don't want to waste any of it. I don't want to waste a drop of it. I want to enjoy the wine. And that's what the wine was meant to... That's what the wine is for. It's, it's not meant to, to sip and spit out in a, in a, in a bucket. It's, it's not meant to be wasted. It's meant to enjoy. And that's what I'm doing. Red Gman says about... Oh, oh uh, I'm, I'm reading what he said, read before. Okay. <clears throat> Missed that. Uh, let me get back to Twi uh, to Facebook here for just a minute. Oh, Jeffrey's in the chat. Jeffrey, it's great to see you. Uh, I'm glad you're here. How are you, how are you and your family doing? You, you guys doing all right? <clears throat> Jeffrey says, thanks, but it's not my birthday. Well, that's... Jeffrey, I hope you're doing all right. I hope you and your family are fine. Um, uh, tell me how you're doing. And... Um... <laughs> <clears throat> I, I know I kind of mixed all when I was tagging people I, uh, on Facebook. I was kind of mixing the birthdays and everything else together. That's, that wasn't the intent. But, uh, Jeffrey, I'm glad you're here. And stick around, buddy. You know, once again, Jeffrey was an inspiration to me. He was one of the inspirations to me to do streaming because he's done quite a bit of that. He's he's an old hand at that. He knows that stuff. And, and uh, Jeffrey, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being an, an inspiration to me. Uh, even if you were doing it completely sober. <laughs> That's my friend Jeffrey. So anyway, um, where were we? Okay, let's do the national days just for, for briefly. I'm going to go through this quickly. We have some national days to toast. What time is it? 10.56. Okay. Eastern time. Let me get to the national days, and um, the first thing we've got here, there's some interesting stuff here. You know, first thing off the bat is National Code Talkers Day. You familiar, You know what that is, National Code Talkers Day? That's pretty big. That's a pretty big deal. I'm going to read this because I'm, I pulled this up. As a matter of fact, to be more specific, the National Navajo to, uh, Code Talkers Day, National Navajo Code Talkers Day, um, and, and I'm going to actually read this. This is this is coming from the NationalDayCalendar.com. Of course, uh, my friend uh, Marlo Anderson, who is the CEO of, of NationalDayCalendar.com. This is that's what everybody uses pretty much for getting their national days. If you ever hear them on the radio or TV saying, "Oh, today's National Whatever Day," or whatever week, uh, he's the man who curates all this stuff on his website at NationalDayCalendar.com. Cool stuff. So national, and I'm reading from this, okay, just uh, for disclosure. Um, each year on August 14th, National Navajo Code Talkers Day honors the contributions of the Native Americans who brought their unique abilities to the World War II effort. The day also highlights their impact on U.S. code and the Native American language that made it possible. Now here's the thing. Um, and they, they did honor these, these gentlemen uh, uh, later on. But uh, they gave them the congressional, uh, I think 29 of them got uh, congressional gold medals. And then later on, uh, the remaining uh, Navajo Code talkers were presented with congressional silver medals. Now, if you have not, if you're not familiar with this, during World War II, and they did this a little bit in World War I, too, um, to, as part of the, the codes that were sent back and forth, to send messages back and forth, uh, what they did was uh, in World War II and somewhat in World War I, they used the Navajo language uh, as a code 
to send uh, message, coded messages back and forth dur during the World War to uh, prevent the enemy from finding out what they were talking about. And uh, the Navajo Code Talkers were a group of Navajo from the Navajo tribe that that uh, that would uh, uh, write and decipher and 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 and, and you know. Uh, and encrypt uh, these messages in, in the Navajo language. They would convert in the Navajo language uh, to to uh, keep the enemy from from very smart. Actually, very smart move. It was very very effective. If you if you never really heard of that, if you're interested in this sort of thing, uh, history wise, um, check out a couple. There are a couple of things you can check out. There's a documentary with interviews and backstories uh, called Navajo Code Talkers. The epic story, and um, this this is a, a documentary. There's also another one called True Whispers: The Story of the Navajo Code Talkers, and uh, they, have, they even have a museum. They have a museum for this, so um, they I think the museum is located in Tuba City. Uh, well, actually, they have a World War II museum in New Orleans and the Navajo Code Talker Museum in Tuba City. Uh, Tuba City. That's interesting. Um, I didn't know it was a tuba city. <laughs> I wonder if there was one for for a trombone and, and trumpet uh, trumpet city. I, I, I don't mind me. It's a, this is the wine topic. All right, I'm talking. The wine's talking through me. Um, so anyway, that that's uh, Navajo. Co this is the Code Talkers Day, and I would definitely drink to that because I think it was a brilliant idea, and I think that uh, the Navajo. Code talkers were, were uh, definitely fully deserving of those uh, congressional medals of honor. Here's a National Code Talkers Day. <clears throat> it's also National Leathercraft Day. I'm going to go through these kind of quick. National Relaxation Day. Okay, I'm all for that. I got to. I've got to. Uh, got to toast that because I'm all for relaxation. Today was National Relaxation Day. I tried to get in a, a nap. I tried to get in my Saturday afternoon nap. Um, uh, kind of sort of started to happen, but then I got caught up in some other stuff that I'm, we're going to talk about in a few minutes. And this will interest some Twitch, some folks on Twitch. Uh, anyway, here's the National Relaxation Day. It was a rainy day. So I stayed indoors. Tomorrow, I, f I don't know if it's going to rain tomorrow or not, but I'm scheduled to mow the lawn tomorrow since I don't have my son to do it for me anymore. <laughs> Got to mow it myself unless it rains again, and then as I said, I'm going to have to push it back a little further, and the HOA will probably not like that too much. The National Lemon Meringue Pie Day. Do you like lemon meringue pie? Yeah, lemon meringue. You know what I like? I love key lime pie. Where's key lime pie day? I think they have one. But this is a lemon meringue pie day, and if you like lemon meringue pie, toast that lemon meringue pie. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? I just uh, okay. Oh, it's also World Honey Bee Day. That's the third Saturday in August. World Honey Bee Day. Do you know that we rely on the honey bee for so much of our food uh, supply because the honey bees pollinate a lot of, of uh, you know, they pollinate apple orchards and orange groves and whatever else, I, I think. They, they pollinate so much uh, for our food supply. And the, the honeybee has been kind of endangered somewhat lately. And uh, that I, I was watching a documentary a while back on how they do that, where they will they'll kind of lease out their honeybees. The, the 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 beekeepers will lease out their honeybees. I'll take them. They'll transport them to the different uh, groves and different different areas where some of these trees need to be pollinated, and put the bees there for a while so they can pollinate the trees, and then take them back. And uh, very very interesting stuff. A lot of work there. And uh, the 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 honeybees there there uh, are some issues there where they're kind of endangered a little bit, uh, but we rely so much on our uh, on the honeybee for our food supply. Aside from just honey, which I love honey, honey is a great a great natural um, sweetener by the way, and I put it in my tea a lot. Yes, I do drink tea. 
Uh, and I, I, I put honey on a lot of things. Sometimes I spread on toast and things like that. Here's the World Honey Bee Day, third Saturday in August. Okay, it's National uh, August. Tomorrow is National Tell a Joke Day. I had a joke. I don't remember what it was. I was going to tell you a joke, but I can't remember what it was. And um, that's my joke. <laughs> Maybe next week. National Tell a Joke Day. I'm always up for a good joke. Okay, I'm, I'm really, I, I have my dad jokes. And, and my my family just groans when I sit at the table and tell my dad jokes. But I think secret they, secretly they like it. I th think they do. Um, National Tell a Joke Day. There you go. National Roller Coaster Day. I'm not a big fan of roller coaster. Let me toast the joke day thing. There you go. National Roller Coaster Day. Some people love roller coasters. I can't do them. I can't do roller coasters. I, you know, the last, I think the last roller coaster I went on was Space Mountain. Oh, I take that back. I think I went on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, which was, you know, I, yeah, I know. Those are like kitty coasters, you know, right? Okay. I went on Big Thunder. I've been on Space Mountain. That, that's all I could do for roller coasters. I can't really do roller coasters. It's just not my thing. That was, a, that was a big thing. National Airborne Day. Okay. Uh, National, okay. Now, here's where we're coming up to the good stuff. This is what I want to toast here, and I don't have any to toast it with, but I'm going to toast it with wine because that's what we have here. This is the Saturday Night Wine Stream. This is what I was talking about earlier. Today, or tomorrow, I'm sorry, tomorrow, Sunday, uh uh, August 16th, 2020 is National Rum Day. Who loves rum? Who doesn't love rum? Love, rum goes great in a lot of stuff. I, I, you know, in fact, I've got a, a, a bottle of rum downstairs that I've never opened. It actually came to us accidentally. But, and there's another story to that. Maybe I'll tell it another time. Not, not for now. But here's uh, to National Rum Day. I like a good rum. So do many... So do many of the pir many pirates. Arr, arr, me rum. And, and uh, here's the National Rum Day. National, oh, I got to toast that again, right? National Rum Day. I'm toasting National Rum Day with wine. I should be toasting with rum. Maybe next year. Okay. I think that does it for the National Days. I think we're good on that. Let me get back to the chat for just a minute. Uh, let's see, uh, we're kind of quiet on Twitch right now, Facebook, uh, Ed says a joke, a bad hygiene, <laughs> Ed's got a joke for National Joke Day, okay, I've got to, I've got to relay this, okay, Ed, thank you, buddy, I, I appreciate it, you came through, Ed, you came through again, joke, okay, here's the joke, a bad high jumper walks into a bar, didn't I tell that one on Facebook a while back? <laughs> you got me, Ed. Thanks. Excellent. Here's to you, Ed. Into a, an excellent joke. A bad high jumper walks into a bar. I like that. Uh, actually, I, I, I love that. Let me change that. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. I do appreciate that. I really appreciate that. So, um, here's where we're, uh, uh, we got the national days. I want to get to Twitch here in just a minute, but before I do that, I just want to give a, a, a quick notation about weather radios and Ed, uh, you're, you're in Florida. A lot of my friends in Florida, um, uh, we, we have, we've had another tropical storm coming up in that general direction i don't know what the status is to be honest i i really don't i hadn't been keeping up in the last couple of days because i've been busy with other things like work but um there are uh, that we are in the height we were in the throes or the height of hurricane season hurricane season doesn't end till you know november um, hurricanes uh, on the East Coast, and we've actually had some coming up the West Coast as well. Uh, we, we have one threatening um, Hawaii not too long ago. 
uh, hurricanes are a concern during this time of year, but it's not just hurricanes. Guess what happened to us last Sunday morning during the wine, okay, the, the wine stream, the night, uh, the day uh, after the wine stream, last week's wine stream, the uh, Sunday morning. I was awakened to my wife, to Chi, going, I think Cosmo went out. What's Cosmo doing? What's Cosmo doing? I'm like, what is going on? So I woke up. I, but I, I, my eyes weren't completely open yet, and I could hear it. But I could hear it. I hear the door just vibrate, go boom, 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 like that. And uh, I'm thinking, well, what's going on? She says, Oh, Cosmo, what's out? Cosmo, what's out? And she's referring to our dog, Cosmo, uh, because that's what he does. You know, if he has to go out, go to the bathroom, whatever, he'll sit there and bang on the door a little bit. So I, I woke up and I'm like, Cosmo's not at the door. Cosmo's sleeping over here next to me. And all of a sudden, I felt the bed shaking. The bed was just start shaking. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. That's not the dog. That's an earthquake. And we had an earthquake. A 5.1 earthquake. 5.1 on the Richter scale. We had an earthquake in North Carolina. Do you know how the last earthquake we had, that was like, now we had a little bit of a tremor that we felt in Rock Hill while I was at work a couple of years earlier. It was just a slight tremor. This was a 5.1 earthquake. Um, it was centered in, uh, towards the border of, near the border of, uh, I think it was in Dallas, North Carolina, near the border of uh, North Carolina and Virginia. And, um, uh, it, uh, was that it, Dallas? I think that's what, it, no, I, I don't remember what it was, it, it, uh, the name of the town. But uh, it was it centered near the border of North Carolina and Virginia. It was only 37 miles from, from uh, uh, Boone, North Carolina. And uh, uh, they got shook up pretty bad. They, they had some damage. They had some serious, uh, some, some serious damage. Uh, we didn't have any damage. I had to go outside and look around. We, we didn't really have any damage, but it shook us up pretty good. It did. That was the earthquake, and um, I thought, well, that's weird because we. I think the last real earthquake that we had in North Carolina was like a little over a hundred years ago. So uh, it, it surprised everybody. It woke us all up. So anyway, um, what I was getting at was that uh, my weather radio did not go off, and the reason that it did not go off was because in the case of earthquakes. Sometimes those things just come suddenly without any notice at all. And you just didn't, don't really know what's going to happen there. Um, but for a lot of other things, for the uh, and, and they can. And, you know, the National Weather Service will, will send notice of earthquakes. They will do that if there's enough notice. But the thing is, with an er when an earthquake comes, and the National Geological Survey um, uh, uh, they... they, they um, National Geologic, uh, whatever it's called, NGS, NGNS, I don't remember why. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, the wine is starting to kick in. Anyway, they, <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of this. Anyway, they, um, they, um, they don't get a lot of notice uh, for earthquakes. Now, they've been getting better at it lately, but there's still not a lot of notice. But for a lot of other things, for like for hurricanes, for tornadoes, for in tornadoes, you don't have you only have seconds uh, for for that sort of thing, for that kind of warning, for tornado hits, and the seconds count. They definitely count. Um, but there are a lot of other things. There are amber alerts. There are silver alerts. The silver alerts are for the for the elderly. Um, I think we had one the other day, a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, I think. And um, a lot of other alerts for emergencies. You really need to have a weather radio. Because a lot of the weather radio, a lot of the weather, the National Weather Service does uh, relate a lot of these alerts. Not just weather alerts, but also other alerts, like for earthquakes, uh, when they can. And uh, for uh, amber alerts, silver alerts, uh, all, all kinds of other alerts. You really should have a weather radio especially this time of the year. Now, if you go to my friend's, uh, well, buy two-way radios, oh, that's the wrong one. If you go to buy two-way radios.com, I don't have it up here at the moment. 
go to buytwowayradios.com and uh, you can buy a weather radio there. And uh, I don't have any of this up here at the moment. The uh, go to buy two way radios. Oh, yes, I do. Here it is. Okay. Go to buy two way radios.com. Get a weather radio and or actually go anywhere and get a weather radio. But if you go to buy two way radios and get a weather radio, you can save five percent off your order by entering code wine show. That's W I N E S H A O W. W I N E S H O W. Wine show at buy two way radios.com. And you will get 5% off your order. And it's actually good for any kind of radio, whether it's a weather radio or a, uh, any kind of these two-way radios, a ham radio like, like I have here, uh, a GMRS radio, FRS radio like I have here, and uh, uh, any kind of a radio you want, air band, marine radio, whatever it is, you can save 5%. Or an accessory, you can save 5% off your order. Uh, if you're a podcaster, you know, like this, this I got this from BuyTwoWayRadios.com. Now, for full disclosure, I do work for BuyTwoWayRadios.com. My boss has authorized me with this promo code to give to you, uh, those who listen uh, to watch and listen on the uh, Saturday Night Wine stream. I don't make any extra money doing this, okay? Just for full disclosure, I don't make any extra money doing this. I just get to keep my job, <laughs> hopefully. And uh, I, um, I'm i doing this because it's a public service to you. Because I am into radios. I am, I am a licensed uh, ham operator and a licensed GMRS radio operator. So I'm, I'm, also a, um, I'm also a trained weather spotter, as my son is also. And we, we've... Uh, done some of the weather spotting. So this is something that I'm doing as a public service and just encourage everyone to just get a weather radio, please, for your own safety and security. Get a weather radio. Anyway, so uh, back to the uh, show here. I want to talk about Twitch for a few minutes. First thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out and I want to give a thanks. Uh, and actually, Sherrod's in the chat. Let me check, check here. Sherrod's in the chat. And actually, it's probably Kathy and Sherrod or Sherrod and Kathy or just Kathy or just Sherrod. It doesn't matter. I'm glad you're here. Uh, happy fifth anniversary to your step down cousin Albert Al Jones and his precious wife Colleen, Bert's son. Well, hey, how about that? Thanks for telling me about that. All right, we got to do that. Uh, let, let me let me break here for just a moment, folks. Let me do this because this is family. This is family, and uh, and this is a special occasion. Okay, happy fifth anniversary. My step down cousin Albert Al Jones, who is namesake of my grandfather, Al Jones, uh, Albert Jones, my grandfather, a beloved grandfather, by the way, who uh, I always admired. Uh, he was just a great guy. He was just a great guy. I wish everybody had known my grandfather. He was just, he was just an, he was just such a cool guy. He really was. And my grandmother too. But um, Albert Al Jones and his precious wife, Colleen, Bert's son. My cousin Bert uh, and uh, his son, Albert Al Jones and his precious wife, Colleen, happy fifth anniversary Happy anniversary to both of you. Yes, yes, that, I, that's great. I'm going to toast you again, just because I can. Thank you for telling me that. Uh, Sherrod or Kathy, uh, if it's both of you or one of you, it doesn't matter. I want to say thank you for letting me know. Happy anniversary. Al Jones and Colleen. Al and Colleen Jones. Happy anniversary. Happy fifth anniversary, and uh, I've got to I've got to love that because that's that's just awesome. Awesome anniversaries are always awesome, and you know, like uh, weddings. I love weddings. Uh, love weddings. I haven't been to one in a while. We didn't. We need more weddings going on here, folks. Let's get some weddings going here. Uh, CM Cinder says that earthquake woke me up. Yes, it did. 
It says, uh, don't forget, I'm a trained weather spotter too. Yes, you are. My daughter, Sam, sent her to you. Uh, she's uh, also a trained weather spotter. We've got to get her a uh, ham license as well. <laughs> She has a GMRS license, actually. She's licensed GMRS because GMRS is licensed for the entire family, by the way. So if you're interested in radios, two-way radios, uh, you can get a ham, uh, excuse me, a, uh, a GMRS radio license, General Mobile Radio Service radio license. That's good for your entire family, entire family, including uh, 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 grandparents, parents, and sons and daughters, and that sort of thing, your entire family. That's pretty cool. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see, where were, was I? Oh, yes, we're going to talk about Twitch a little bit. Uh, let's get back to Twitch, folks. And, uh, anyone, uh, Riptonia is joining us in the chat. Good to see you, Riptonia. And, um, for those who are just joining the chat, I don't know, is, is X Jonathan, uh, uh, streaming right now, or is he in the chat? Because I, I want to send a special shout out to uh, X Jonathan, uh, my friends X Jonathan, and uh, let's see, uh, to Laudic and Polo TV, who are often in the chats here. Um, I, I want to talk about this a little bit, and this is my rant for the night. This is the Rick rant for the night. I, I got to get myself a little. Uh, Tia, can you make me a little Rick rant kind of? Uh, uh, graphic that I can throw up for a few minutes. Okay, let's do this. All right, so here we are uh, on Twitch. I've been spending a lot of time on Twitch lately. Studying Twitch, learning more about Twitch, the Twitch service. And the reason is to, to see um, how I can expand my reach on, on Twitch and, and learn more about it and how, how to do it ethically and how to do it right. And um, we've had, a, 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 I've gained a, a lot of followers on Twitch, which is great. And uh, I, I, you know, I really appreciate each and every one of you following me on Twitch. And uh, I, I see it as a very viable medium. There's a lot of potential to this medium for Twitch. Now, as a streamer, as someone who streams, as a podcaster too, I see a lot of value in, in, in a lot of these different uh, venues, a lot of these different platforms. Having said that, um, there are some things that I, I, I have to take into account on these platforms as well, especially if I'm multi-streaming. Let me explain where I'm going with this. Um... I've been a podcaster for over 14 years, uh, considered one of the old guard for podcasters. And uh, in my day, in my 14 years, I have uh, encountered a lot of different platforms for uh, uh, podcast distribution, for, con for podcast syndication that uh, I've had to learn from the School of Hard Knocks, didn't go to college for it, from the School of Hard Knocks about how to, to handle a lot of these platforms and how to, to uh, uh, do this ethically and do it the right way and without losing my, my, uh, my branding my, uh, as a podcaster and without losing my uh, copyrights, my rights as a podcaster. Now, the thing about podcasting is that uh, I've... Uh, over the years, I have learned, sometimes the hard way, uh, what to do and what not to do and, and how to survive as a podcaster and how to thrive as a podcaster. And um, in the course of that, I, uh, I have learned to study and to check every license agreement. Like if I'm going to join a, a certain platform for something, uh, for, a, for a podcast to distribute my podcast on or to allow that that distribution platform to to syndicate my podcast 
I read all these agreements. I read them word for word to make sure that I'm protected as a podcaster and that my rights are protected as a podcast and my images are protected and that my, uh, my copyright is protected, uh, my, my show is protected. So that's what I, uh, that I've done all these many years. So I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Now, I am not a, uh, look, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. Uh, Gordon, my, my good friend Gordon Firemark, he uh, is uh, kind of a, uh, an attorney that I respect that, uh, that uh, does know that sort of thing, copyright law and trademark law in regards to podcasters. And he's spoken on that many times. And he has, he, uh, actually, uh, Gordon has uh, a lot of uh, different, he, he, he actually does um, some uh, workshops and things like that on it. And, and uh, is very knowledgeable in that. Gordon's a, a very smart guy. So, uh, anything I've checked out, you got a, a Gordon Firemark. Uh, is, is, he's, uh, he's also a podcaster in his own right. And uh, a very good guy. I like Gordon. And um, anyway, so uh, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. I need more wine. Here, let me start here. If you're on Twitch right now, um, I think you want to listen. To, you want to hear this. You you really want to hear this. This is very important. If you're a streamer on Twitch, especially, this is very very important. So um, I I read all of my uh, agreements now, now. Now very early on, when I was doing the Forestville podcast, I was involved in uh, a couple of different platforms. One was a business-related podcast po uh, pa podcast platform. I guess the wine is kicking in. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the entertainment part, folks. So uh, I was uh, on this biz... I can't remember the name of it right offhand, but it's a, it's a business podcast platform. It was a uh, business radio kind of thing. And they were streaming uh, business podcasts. And in the very beginning, when I joined this platform, I, I set up my podcast, The Force Field at the time, which was really, it's, it's an IT, it's the business of IT. That was the, the tagline of the podcast, the business of IT. Talking about business-related topics related to IT, to, to information technology for computer businesses. And um, and I had quite a following. I had, uh, in fact, my podcast was doing very, very well. And uh, I even had, I had some, some sponsors from time to time. It was a very, very well, well-received podcast. As a matter of fact, uh, we made the uh, uh, we were made the top 100 of the uh, uh, small business podcasts. Uh, we made the, we were the top 100 of small business podcasts for uh, four or five years in a row, I think. Right up there with uh, shows like uh, the, the uh, well, a lot of uh, a lot of other really really respectable radio shows, you know, uh, including Clark Howard, which I, I like to listen to. Clark, I was listed just below the Clark Howard show, as a matter of fact. And uh, for, for many years. And, um, uh, you know, which I thought was pretty cool. So uh, my podcast had some, some clout. And I joined this business network. And in the very beginning, the business net network, uh, they said, hey, you know, just you're just part of the network. It's cool. Everything's cool. Well, over time, they decided... They decided they were going to change their, and when I joined them, I read their agreement, and there was nothing in there about ownership. You know, it's like I own my podcast, and they were just going to, they were just going to uh, re re stream it or rebroadcast it. Um, but over a period of time, they decided to add some clauses to their contract, which they did not inform me of. And one of those clauses was that they were going to, that by uh, having my podcast on their network, 
that they were going to own. I, I'm seriously, they were going to own my podcast in perpetuity. That they would go, you couldn't, I couldn't put it on any other platform. They owned my content in perpetuity. I never agreed to that. When I, when I first signed on, that was not in their contract, and I did not agree to that. I would never would have agreed to that in the first place. Um, <clears throat> but they added it in there. They snuck it in there at some point. And when I saw that, I was rather livid about that because, no, you can't do that. Now, this company is not... In, this company isn't around anymore. They're not in business. They don't exist anymore. But uh, at the time, I was thinking, well, you can't do that. You can't just throw in a clause that says that you own my content. Because this is mine. This is my podcast. This is my, my copyright content. So um, so when, that, when I found out about that, by that time, they were pretty much almost kaput. And uh, they, they went out of business soon after that. But it didn't matter to me because as far as I was concerned, it didn't apply to me because I never agreed to it. Never, ever, ever, ever agreed to it. And uh, there have been a few other platforms that have come up in the, in, in, uh, since then that have tried to make that claim. And in those cases, of course, in the podcasting world, in the podcasting space, it's the, those are generally platforms you avoid. Because you can't, you know, they can't own your content, or they can't claim ownership of your content. Now, some of them can't claim rights to use your content, you know, for uh, uh, for <clears throat> pro uh, promotional reasons and things like that. But they can't own it. <clears throat> now, that hasn't stopped some of them from trying. As a matter of fact, I think at one point. Uh, I think, uh, I want to say Anchor, <laughs> Anchor, yeah, uh, tried to throw in some clauses similar to that, that they could control it, and that was met with a lot of pushback, and that had the CEO of Anchor up on the website defending that in, in, in sort of defense mode and, and changing a lot of things. That was some time back. That was, that was some time back. Anyway, uh, that's according to my recollection, my memory. But um, for the most part, uh, platforms don't try this. They don't. They don't even go near. They don't try this. Okay, it's a, not a not a good not a good thing. So now we come to uh, Twitch. Um, Twitch, an interesting platform. It's primarily a gaming platform. And um, it's a gaming platform, you know. Of course, a lot of people are gamers, and they're streaming their games, and they're streaming, you know, you know, their, whatever's going on in their games. But uh, in the last few years, or last couple of years, I should say, that Twitch has become more than just a gaming uh, streaming platform, a streaming platform for gamers. Uh, there are a lot of people that that uh, do their cooking shows. That's become kind of popular, you know, the cooking shows. And I host a couple of those on my Twitch um, uh, account when I'm I'm not there. Uh, cooking shows and uh, Bob Ross. Bob Ross has a, a, a show going on here. That that the, you know, Bob Ross isn't with us anymore, but I was always a fan of Bob Ross. I enjoyed watching his. Uh, Joy painting shows and and he, his, when I saw that he was that uh, the uh, company that 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 has the Bob Ross shows now was streaming on Twitch, I uh, I jumped on that and said, hey, you know, I'd I'd be happy to to host their shows while I'm not streaming. That's fine. And uh, and then that's good, you know. And a few other streamers. My son, my son stream, my son Tommy. He he has a, his Q Command podcast, his Tommy Antio podcast. They they've done some videos and they do some streaming, and uh, I'll host their streams when I'm not streaming. That's that's great. That's fine with me. I love it. It's it's, it's excellent. And uh, a couple other people, a couple other uh, people I've become fans of. Uh, uh, Miss Click, who who I've. Uh, uh, who uh, is a fellow podcaster and streamer and, and uh, who 
Uh, I got to meet a podcast the first year we were there, and and uh, she's just she's just a, a really really sweet person. Uh, she's another person that uh, that I'm, I'm I'm happy to to stream her stuff on on uh, my Twitch channel when I'm not streaming. Um, a few other people. Okay, so this is where I'm going with this, uh, and this is really for the for the Twitch folks, particularly the Twitch streamers. Um. So I started streaming on Twitch a while back. I'm multi-streaming. I'm multi-streaming on Twitch and YouTube and Periscope for Twitter and, of course, YouTube. And the thing is about uh, Twitch, and Twitch has primarily been a gaming platform up until a couple of years ago when they started really, uh, you know, discovering that a lot of people that were doing food uh, related shows and drink shows like this one, like Drink with Rick, you know, where I'm, where I'm reviewing wine and, and things like that. And they're discovering that, oh, you know, this, this, it's a little bit bigger than the just gamers, and so they're, they're doing more of that now. But it's primarily still a gaming uh, uh, kind of a streaming platform. Now, Twitch is owned now by Amazon. Amazon owns Twitch. Uh, just for full for, to let you know. So uh, with that, uh, when I start, first started streaming on Twitch, it was like there was nothing going on. There's really not a lot going on on Twitch, and I was thinking, ah, do I really be streaming on Twitch? It's really not my venue. Food and drink, uh, you got to just chatting and and uh, things like that. You got a few of those uh, departments, but but uh, food and drink. Uh, social eating, social drinking, that sort of thing. It, 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 it kind of works. And I get a, I have a, I have my tribe here on, to, on Twitch, actually, and, which is great. The, 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 the great people and that they've, they've uh, done a lot to help me further the, the channel, the Twitch channel. And I'm very appreciative of that, which I'm going to get to in just a moment. Because this is directly for the Twitch uh, folks. Um, I've, I've done a lot of studying on Twitch and I'm thinking, wow, there's a lot of potential with streaming on Twitch as a podcaster and as a streamer, which is, which is great. So I was really excited about this, uh, as I saw my, uh, uh my, uh, followers grow and, uh, the interest grow, uh, following them on Twitch. So then I was looking at the possibility of becoming a, uh, a, a, uh, an affiliate. And a few of my followers, so who, who uh, are fans there on Twitch, were saying, hey, we're going to get you set up as an affiliate. That's, that's a really great idea, affiliate. And you know what? For me, I'll tell you what. My, I have a dream job now. I do. I do. And I love my job. Nothing wrong with that. But you know what? The ultimate dream job, and I've said this several times, the ultimate dream job is to get paid for drinking wine. <laughs> That's my ultimate dream. Now, once again, it's kind of a pipe dream. I don't know if it if it ever happened, you know, as I retire or something, if it ever happened to get paid for drinking wine or reviewing wine, that would be just awesome. Who I would love it. I would love it. It was it'd be fantastic. But you know. It's it's a pipe dream, and and uh, look, look, let's be honest. Um, I've got to be real about this, okay? I do. But uh, is, is some of my fans on 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 Twitch have said, "Hey, you know, let's get you set up as an affiliate." I was shocked when I saw that some of the big streamers on there they make a lot of money. They make a lot of a serious amount of money uh, as affiliates on Twitch. Now, not everybody does. There are a lot of small streamers. There are a lot of other streamers that don't make anything. They don't make a red dime, a red cent, I should say. Uh, but there are some that really make a lot of money. And, and look, I'm not looking to get rich on this. I just uh, be able to live, live comfortable and just be able to basically support uh, my wine habit. Basically support. Look, I, I've, I've got bills. I don't make any money on the stream now as it is. I don't. I don't make any money on this, okay? Uh, everything that I give to you, that, everything that, I, that, uh, that seems to be a, uh, a, a, uh, 
a promotion or a uh, sponsorship or whatever, it's, it's not costing me anything. I, I mean, it's not giving me anything. It's not bringing anything back to me. It's just costing me. Uh, i got to keep the lights on. So I'm paying for all of this. Okay? I'm paying for all of it. And I'm not making anything back right now. I'm really not. That nothing. I'm just doing this for fun. This is for fun. I'm just doing this for fun on Saturday nights. And would I love to be making something off of this? Absolutely. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to any of you that I would love to be making money doing this. That would be great. But let's, but let's be honest. Come on. I'm doing this and... Um, I'm doing it for fun. And as long as it's fun, I'm going to keep doing it. If it stops being fun or you know becomes an issue, then I'll stop doing it. But for right now, it's a good time. I'm having a good time. I'm having a great time. So, um, and I don't want to go too long on this, but uh, basically where we are right now is I'm spending all the money. I'm not making anything on this, okay? It's just, it's it's a total loss for me. It really is. It's just, uh, just, just some of them do it for fun on Saturday nights, and sometimes Wednesday nights or or whatever. I'm doing any of the the rewinds or the restreams. So, some of my Twitch followers have come up and said, "Hey, let's make you an affiliate because you can make some money." And I, I was blown away when I saw some of this. I thought, "Wow, you know, I could really make some serious money." It's amazing some of the money that some of these people are making. Unbelievable. So I thought, okay, well, I'll go for a Twitch affiliate. Let me see what this entails, and I'll go. I'll give it a try. I'll go for it. And so I started going for that that goal. I set myself a, a goal to say, let me become a Twitch affiliate. Because I thought, well, what's it going to be? It's affiliate program, right? It's some kind of affiliate program. I can get uh, subscribers, paid subscribers on Twitch. I don't have anything like that on Facebook or, or YouTube or anything like that. YouTube's kind of a loss anyway, for different reasons. I'm not going to go into that tonight. But um, but on on Twitch, I thought, well, okay, this could be pretty interesting. It could be fun to try it out and see what, where this goes. So uh, I started going for that. I, I started to make that uh, a, uh, a, uh, a goal. And I started to, to step in. And my son, Tommy, helped me out a lot. My daughter, Tia, my wife, Chi, they all helped me out to, to try to reach this goal. But I'll tell you what, the folks that really made a difference, the folks that really made a difference were uh, folks like X Jonathan and Laudic and Polo TV, people on Twitch that have really... Uh, that really uh, stepped up to the plate and said, hey, let's, let's help make you a, a, an affiliate. I want to, before I go any further with this, I want to say thanks. Because I, I did make, I, I did, uh, there are four, like, four steps to become an affiliate here. And uh, I reached all of those. I reached all of those goals, especially from last week. Uh, when X Jonathan did what's called a raid, I'm not going to go. Not going to go in for the folks who are not familiar with Twitch, uh, because I'm multi-streaming this. Um, I'm not going to go into what that means, but um, the he and his um, his tribe on uh, on his stream, uh, they did a raid. Eighty-five of them came in and um, just. And I was in the middle of doing the show last week, and my son Tommy uh, was was um, was modding. He was he was acting as a mod in the in the stream last week, and he said, hey, you, and they were trying to alert me to it. I was busy going over the. I think we were. D d uh, I was going over the the grape. I think of the week, the, uh, the talking about the grape of the week that we were learning about, and um, he just. Said you, you, you got a raid. This is you know all of a sudden I have all these people on Twitch and I wasn't even really watching it that carefully because I was kind of going over the the grape and uh, then all of a sudden I looked in and I said wow there are all these people in the chat and my son Tommy said oh you just got raided and uh, I I mean I was aware of what that meant but um, and I thought well that's pretty awesome and 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 ex Jonathan and his his uh, 
uh, folks, his followers, uh, 85 of them just kind of raided my stream. And I wasn't really expecting that. I wasn't expecting that at all. I was humbled. I was really, I was, I, I was genuinely humbled by that because they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do that at all. Um, and uh, Polo TV and Laudick and X Jonathan and some of those other people there, and, and uh, they they, uh, they just came in and just and just raided my stream and uh, brought in a lot more followers and, and a lot more activity on the stream. And I I have to say right now that I am truly grateful for that. I'm truly grateful for that uh, for for all of you who came in and did that. You, I know you didn't have to do that. It was very cool, and I appreciate it. I, you have no idea how much I appreciated that uh, and how much I was humbled by that. And I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to give a toast out to uh, X Jonathan and, and uh, those those folks there, Laudick, Polo TV, and all those people uh, that, that, that did that and, and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, from the bottom of my heart for 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 uh, doing that for that effort thank you very much I'm going to toast you again because it's my show and I can I do appreciate it that was much appreciated I, I can't tell you what that means to me uh, I'm, I'm just truly humbled by that um now, having said that, um, so this is uh, so this is where we are right now. So I've I've hit my thanks to to all of those folks there. A lot of them based in France, by the way, and we were we were reviewing a French wine, as a matter of fact, the Pierre um, uh, Angulaire. And my terrible French, they endured my terrible French and were very nice about it. I mean, th those guys, those those folks were very nice about it. Um, you know, my, my terrible French, uh, and I'm very appreciative of that too, but, uh, here's, and I know it should be a, but because uh, that, that I, I do appreciate it. I really do. Here's where I am now, uh, with the affiliate program and it would be great to be an affiliate with Twitch. It, it really would, but I'm. I, I at this time, unfortunately, I, I I'm, I'm declining. I'm not doing the affiliate program at this point, and and I'll tell you why. This is the reason why, and it has nothing to do with with you guys. You guys were great. You folks were were great, and I uh, once again I appreciate it. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um. This 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 is the problem. There there is an issue. There is an issue with it, and I'll tell, explain what the issue is. And for those of you who are watching, especially those who are podcasters who are not <clears throat> really in the Twitch uh, realm, or some of you who may be in the Twitch realm who are are uh, multi streaming, this is something that you want to pay attention to. For those of you who are podcasters who are not on Twitch at all, but are thinking about it, this is something you really want to pay attention to. Now, first of all, once again, Twitch is owned by Amazon. The CEO of Amazon is Jeff Bezos, okay? one of Probably one of the richest people in the world, okay? Let's just keep all that in context, okay? And this is nothing against Jeff Bezos or his money or anything like that, okay? But, but we, uh, we do need to keep everything in context. All right, so uh, so I've been uh, approved to join the Twitch affiliate program, which could make me uh, quite a bit of money. It could. There's a potential for quite a bit of money to be made on this. But I'm going to need to decline it for one, one reason, and this is the reason. When I was going over the Twitch affiliate agreement, there is a section in there, uh, section 2.2, .2, and this is called Live Content Exclusivity. And I'm reading this. I'm reading this live. I'm reading this verbatim now. I'm reading this from Twitch's agreement. Now, 
Twitch can't come after me for this because it is public. It is, you can Google it up. That's what I did. I Googled it up and looked at it. And once again, I read all of these contracts, all of these agreements before I sign anything or before I, before I agree to anything. I'm going to read this verbatim. 2.2, live content exclusivity. That's the key word, exclusivity. Solely for any live audiovisual work you choose to provide to us as user content, your, or in parentheses, your live, quench, uh, your live Twitch content, in uh, parentheses, starting from beginning of the initial broadcast of any such live Twitch content and continuing for a period of 24, in parentheses again, the number 24, in parentheses, hours, following the end of the initial broadcast of such live Twitch content, in parentheses again, the exclusivity period, in parentheses, such live Twitch content is exclusive. Such live Twitch content, I'm going to read that again. Such live Twitch content is exclusive to Twitch, in parentheses again. They like to use the parentheses a lot in here. Even as to you, in parentheses, during the exclusivity period of any live Twitch content, you will not nor permit or authorize any third party to broadcast, stream, distribute, exhibit, and otherwise make available such live Twitch content in any manner. Notwithstanding the foregoing, you have the right to make any live Twitch content available during the exclusivity period solely via the Twitch services. After the exclusivity period of any live Twitch content, the license to such live Twitch content will become non-exclusive and you will have the right to broadcast, stream, distribute, exhibit, and otherwise make available such live Twitch content in any manner and format desired by you. The initial broadcast, in quotes, means the initial broadcasting, streaming, distribution, or other exhibition of live Twitch content via the internet, whether such live Twitch content is broadcast on a real-time, live basis as the subject event is occurring or such live Twitch content has been pre-recorded and is being initially broadcast for the first time via any manner or method of streaming. A lot of legalese in there, right? Yeah, uh, that's... that's uh... Uh, the legally that's uh confuse you and, and get you to say oh okay i'll just click on that and i'm a good with it and good okay no i'm not good with this and i'll tell you why okay twitch has a fact a frequently asked question uh area and they clarify what this actually means although i already know what it means because i can read legalese okay having uh i i'm not a I'm not an attorney, and I don't play one on TV, but my grandparents did say that I would make a great attorney because I talk so much. <laughs> Take that as you will. Whatever. But okay, but here is the... Um, and now I read that verbatim from Twitch's website for full disclosure, and I can do that because this is fair use because I am, I, I am doing commentary on this, and uh, I'm reporting on this, okay? Fair use. Okay, once again, for fair use, and if you hear uh, somebody uh, crying in the background, that's my, dog, uh, my son's dog. He wants in. He's not coming in. Cosmo, go back to see Mama. Okay. Uh, all right, back to the affiliate agreement. Okay, so there is a frequently asked questions, or a FAQ, as they call them on the affiliate agreement and a question on what do you mean by exclusivity for live Twitch content? And this is where they clarify what this means. And I'm reading this again because this is fair use. I can do this, okay? It's fair use because I'm doing commentary on this. And according to what they say here on their frequently asked questions, uh, what do you mean by exclusivity for live Twitch content? If the stream is embedded in another website in accordance with our developer services agreement, this still counts as being on Twitch and is not a violation of, of this policy. And let me explain that. In other words, 
if if uh, I'm streaming on Twitch and I embed the Twitch stream on another website, like my own website or another third-party website, that's okay. No problem with that. That's that's perfectly fine because it's really still coming from the Twitch platform. It's just being the the stream is just being embedded. The the Twitch stream is being embedded on that third party site. So that's okay. No problem there. All right. The exclusivity clause, I'm reading this again. The exclusivity the exclusivity clause does not otherwise restrict affiliates from using other streaming platforms to do live streaming. Oh, well that's great. Oh, wait, wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. For instance, an affiliate is permitted to start a stream on Twitch. And after ending that stream, immediately starts a new separate stream on another platform, assuming the affiliate is not also using Twitch to broadcast that same content at the same time. Oh, wait a minute. So in other words, what they're saying here is, that we're not restricted as long as long as we're we're either uh, embedding the Twitch stream onto another site, uh, we're not restricted to that. But it doesn't restrict the affiliate from using other uh, uh, streaming platforms. In other words, you can stream to other platforms. You can multi-stream to all the platforms you want uh, for live streaming. But this is assuming that the affiliate is not also streaming to to twitch simultaneously in other words if you're streaming if you're not streaming to switch time simultaneously if you're done with your stream on twitch you can switch you can stream to any other platform you want well thank you very much twitch and amazon for allowing me to stream on other streams after i've streamed on yours that and and, and to be honest you have actually no legal reason to pre prevent me from doing that anyway because I have every right, because this is my stream, I have every right to stream wherever the heck I want, okay? Uh, and it also says, lastly, it's worth bearing in mind that affiliates' exclusivity obligations impact only live content, not past stream content or VOD, that means video on demand. That's what that means, VOD. Affiliates can upload the same VOD or video on demand to Twitch and other platforms without any exclusivity concerns with the exception, again, of archiving, the live, uh, of archiving live content within 24 hours, 24 hours after it broadcasts on Switch. On Twitch. Also remember that broadcasting pre-recorded live content on Twitch is considered real-time streaming of live content, in parentheses again, when it is broadcast for the first time. So in other words, what this means is, is that what Twitch is demanding, or not once, but it's demanding, and, and it's actually uh, what you're agreeing to, is that um, the first 24, is that what you knew is on the outside, on the outset, you they have exclusivity for you to Twitch, to, to stream only to Twitch. Only to Twitch. You're allowed to stream only to Twitch. You can't multi-stream anywhere else. Only to Twitch for the first 24 hours. Now, they have exclusivity rights to that stream from you from your content, your copyrighted content, your content that you own, that you're creating, that you're paying money for to stream, they have exclusivity to that stream for 24 hours. After that 24 hours, you are allowed, allowed to stream anywhere you want. The, that exclusivity ends and you are allowed to stream anywhere you want after that first 24 hours. Now what this means is, essentially, if I were to practice this, is that uh, if I was actually to do this, to agree to this, is that uh, when I, uh, say for instance, open up this bottle of uh, Jacob's Creek Classic Shiraz, I could only stream this to Twitch, that initial opening and the initial review, 
and everything else that we're doing. Strap or stream to any other platform I wanted. Facebook, YouTube, only on Twitch and open this bottle and review it and everything on Twitch. 24 hours later, which will be Sunday night at 10 p.m. or after, afterwards, if you will, uh, I would be allowed to do it again. I would have to do a whole new stream, a separate stream, where I open up another bottle of Jacob's Creek Classic Shiraz and pour it and say, hey, I'm tasting this for the first time and pair it with food and do the birthdays and the anniversaries and the, uh, uh, you know, the national days, whatever else I wanted to talk about for all those other streams. Now, um, think about that for just a moment. I would have to do two separate shows. I would have to do two shows, one show for Twitch only and another separate show for all these uh, for all these other streams. Um, that's what they're talking about. That's that's what this is. That's that's the agreement. Um, so for this reason, I can't do this. There's no way. I there's no way I can do this. There's there's absolutely no way that I could do this. First of all, I'm not going to buy two bottles of this wine and then pretend, you know, try it for, for, for Twitch and then open up another one 24 hours later on a Sunday night, the day before I have to go back to work, and uh, try this again and do it all over again and pretend that I'm doing it for the first time. There's no way that's happening. Absolutely no way. Uh, second, there is, uh, there's no way that, that's not feasible. Uh, you know, I'm sitting here having to open two bottles of wine for two separate streams. It, it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense at all. Zero sense. Um, second, this is my wine stream. This is a wine stream. And this is our wine stream, actually, because you're part of the wine stream. It's not just me. This is not just me. This is your wine stream, too. Everybody here on Facebook, on Twitch, on uh, Twitter, on uh, YouTube, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> this is your wine stream too. You're part of it. You're in this. You're in the chats. You're part of the stream. How can I do that? How can I do that? In, in, at least in good conscience. It's. Um, it, it makes absolutely zero sense. Which is why. After looking over this, I have to decline. The uh, as much as I hate to do it because I know that the 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 folks streaming, uh, freaking username is is here, um, and and thanks for joining me, freaking username, uh, I I appreciate it, uh, and uh, there's a lot of people uh, a lot of people here who have been following me on, uh, uh, Twitter uh, excuse me Twitch who have really supported me and have supported this effort, to to help me obtain um, this uh, the, this affiliate uh, status and I really do appreciate it but the thing is I cannot in good conscience do this for for this reason because here's the thing I'm not just on Twitch I'm on Twitter I'm on uh, Facebook I'm on YouTube and um, I can't. I can't do this. I. I would be eliminated by just doing this on Twitch alone. I would be um, eliminating my family and friends on tw on Twitter, on on Facebook, especially uh, the folks who follow me on YouTube. Um, and uh, Sherrod says, by the way, Sherrod says on YouTube, happy anniversary. Uh, oh, it says, uh, I, I read that already. Okay. Um, and it says, there was something about which I was to remind you. Yes, the, actually, the, there was something uh, that, that you're going to remind me of. And that's of, um, it's actually the analyst is coming up here shortly. Um, <laughs> thanks for reminding me, Ed. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Uh, thanks for reminding me. I'm almost done with this rant. But uh, this is for actually right now for the folks at Twitch. Um, 
uh, a freaking unique username says red wine to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so freaking unique username says, why are you not the president? <laughs> I wouldn't want that job. Too much, too, too much. Uh, I would not want the job of president at all. Uh, look, um, I think Twitch has enormous potential for, for folks other than game, just the gaming. I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's a nice platform for gaming, uh, streaming games. But it has enormous potential for um, for streamers everywhere, and for uh, podcasters who are streaming. In fact, there is I think there is a podcast uh, streaming category there. It's just being discovered, and I think it, it Twitch is very very underrated when it comes to the potential for this. But once again, Twitch is owned by Amazon. Amazon is really has 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 Twitch pretty much. Uh, they, they just look at Twitch as just uh, what what can it offer my uh, my existing platform and and uh, uh, my existing services like uh, Amazon Prime, which they just actually uh, renamed uh twitch prime to i think uh prime gaming i think is what they renamed it to which i think is actually probably not a good move on amazon's part and look jeff if uh, jeff bezos if you're watching if you're having to catch this uh, i really don't think that's the best move i think there's a lot more potential to twitch than you realize or you're willing to realize or that you care about and i'm pretty sure you don't care because Look, Jeff Bezos has $116 million or whatever, or a billion dollars or whatever he is. He's one of the richest people in the world. $116 billion or $118 billion. I don't know why. I lost count. doesn't matter anyway. It's not my money. How much money do you need? Come on. How much money do you need to live on, Bezos? Come on. How much money do you need? I, 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 really. Um, but you've got to cut these people on Twitch a break. You really do. I mean, for, for people who are... Um, Twitch users, uh, people who are Twitch streamers, a lot of people, there are a lot of gamers that are, are, are uh, streaming on Twitch. There are a lot of other people streaming on Twitch and have just discovered Twitch, recently discovered it, like myself. Um, there's a lot of potential with this platform, and it's being totally wasted by Amazon, totally being misused by Amazon. And that one clause, that one clause in that contract prevents me from becoming a Twitch affiliate. Because, first of all, look, all right, Twitch, it, 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 it's, it's a platform. It's, it's, that's their own thing. That's their proprietary platform. It's a business. I, I get all that. I get all that. They can do whatever they want. It's their business. They can do whatever they want. They can make the rules however they want to make them. I get that. I understand that. I respect that, okay, and to to a point. But uh, there comes a point in time when you you, you have to realize, that, you know, uh, what's really good, what's really best for the people that are providing you the content, the content creators. Not just me, but I'm talking about all those people who are streaming their games and everything else, or cooking shows, or uh, just chatting, or whatever they're, else they're doing on Twitch. Um, uh, they're, they're, these people are, are providing content, they're providing value to your site, and you're profiting from them. How many of them, uh, below the, the top one percenters, um, are you actually um, paying attention to? And are you actually accommodating for and, and actually rewarding for their work, for what they're doing? And uh, I think there comes a point where uh, I think there, there, there comes a point where uh, as, as a streamer or as a content provider, I should say, but because they're, they're podcasters doing this too, where you have to realize, you know what, uh, I'm providing free content to this platform that's owned by Amazon. And Amazon isn't really giving me the compensation for it, and they're demand they're making demands on my content that they have actually have no right, no right to make demands on, 
because it isn't their content, but yet they're profiting from that content. They're making money off that content with uh, little to no compensation for the, the, the content creators. They're, so they're basically pimping the content creators for their own gain. And yeah, if that sounds like a strong word, it is, uh, but that's the truth. That's the truth. Those of us who are content creators on Twitch are being taken advantage of. Now, of course, you, know, you could say there is a give and take there. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we got another platform to stream on. That's great. But you know what? I don't need Twitch. I don't need Twitch. Okay? I have my own website. If I wanted to, I can just go ahead and host my shows and just content, and just post from my own website. And I own all the rights to it, and it's mine. And I don't need Twitch. I'm doing Twitch to kind of expand my horizons and trying to expand my reach a little bit. But I don't need Twitch. Okay? Now, yeah, granted, I would love to be making money from Twitch. Sure, it'd be great. And Twitch has the means with which uh, content creators can profit from it, as well as Twitch. But uh, at this point in time, because of that one single clause where they're requiring exclusivity, which I think oversteps their boundary. I think it really, I mean, yeah, it's their platform. They can do what they want. But by requiring, by locking you into their platform, to say you can only stream on our platform and dictating to you as a streamer what you can and can't do with your content is unethical. It's unethical and it's unacceptable to me. It's not acceptable to me. Nobody, no one dictates to me where I can and can't put my content if I choose, so choose, or what I can do with my content. Content. If I want to multi-stream it, whatever platforms I want to do, that's my choice, not Twitch's. It's my call. And if Twitch wants to make an issue out of it and cut me off, okay, you know, it's going to be sad to leave Twitch, but this is my content. Not Twitches. It's not does not belong to Jeff Bezos. It belongs to me, and um, that's my rant. And it's a long rant. I know it's a long rant, but it's something that I really, I, I really feel strongly about. I feel strong. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm also going to blog about this. But uh, look, I'm gonna as long as I can stream on Twitch for free and to my to my followers on Twitch, it's fine. And uh, if I don't make any money off of Twitch, it is what it is. But the thing is, is that I will not agree to this sort of thing. I will not, I refuse to be pimped out by a platform. I will not be held, uh, I will not be uh, held uh, a hostage by a platform for any reason. And uh, that's that's my rant. Anyway, so uh, I didn't mean to make be that a downer, but I want it to be a, a, a 